Betty Barnaby. I'm a, a school teacher, and I teach grade five, six. I involve a lot of um, Aboriginal content in my studies, as in particular with social studies, and also make myself available to help um, any kind of cultural activities or emphasis on Aboriginal teachings. I also do that within the school. Social studies is really targeted on uh, having children understand uh, where they come from. When they first begin formal education in kindergarten, they would study, it's all about them. And then they move to me and my community. Then it's me and my, like, it's like my uh, region, province, uh, territory, and then Canada, and then they move to me in the world. So by the time they get to me, there's a lot of me in like the territory. So it's trying to have them understand their place coming from a region, coming from a community, then a region, and then speaking territorially, and then they go on to me in Canada and the world. Extremely important, very, very important. These children, um, just because of all the, the history of our people, are impacted by the past. Um, our society has really been uh, under a lot of trauma. And I, you know, with all the changes that have happened within our regions, our homes, things have changed. And there, it's frightening when you see the changes, especially somebody like me that's 62 years old. Um, I've been in education for a long time, and it gives me a point of view to look at it like in reflection as to the changes. In a lot of areas, there's positive changes, but within our communities and in the homes, there's been a lot of um, changes that have impacted family units the way children are confused about who they are because they live um, differently than I did when I was a child. And this impacts the way they, they know themselves or don't know themselves. And as young as they are when they come to me and they're 10 years old, and for some of them it's like the first time they'll hear the word Aboriginal. And to really, really try to instill in them a sense of pride in who we are as a people. And this is a lot of, I find that I'm just in the perfect place for, you know, within the school system, like to be in this position where I'm able, because I'm an Aboriginal person, to really put emphasis on this. And um, before they go on to um, junior high is to really, really try to to make sure that they have a good sense of who they are. I think we're really fortunate here, and it's probably because of um, we have people that are committed, that come in, that are young, and even though they're transient teachers, we do have a few people, local people, that are determined to uh, make sure that we have cultural programs, that we um, try to implement uh, traditional activities as much as possible. And I can, after being in this position for 30 something years, I can say that we come from a time when we didn't even have an Aboriginal language program when I first started to today where we we have a TP, we have cultural outings, like, you know, we're, um, there's a lot of um, events that our whole day starts every day with an assembly that promotes um, the Aboriginal 
laws. The dental laws are our school rules. So that is really, really important. And I always feel that we have such a safe, well-run like environment for them. It's like just, it's not, just doesn't have to be just Aboriginal people teaching Aboriginal content. It's everyone getting on board and trying to operate with things in mind that enrich these children. I think it's our school assemblies greeting them first thing in the morning and welcoming them in, being there for them, um, setting the tone for the day and gathering together and going over the Dena laws and talking about that and spending time with them, like starting the, the day off well, like, you know, having that relationship and the bond. Mm -hmm. I think it really, really sets the, um, sets the day well for, for the children. Like, you know, it's not just go straight to your classroom and there's no connection with anybody else. Mm -hmm. So I think that is uh, one of the, the best things that we've ever done. Mm -hmm. I'll be truthful about, um, I think that our language programs, they have a new curriculum and I'm really excited about that. But to move it from a curriculum to practice, we really need personal commitment, really need people that um, are able to vision what, what we're trying to do. And I find that um, our children work really, really well, like with hands-on activities. And a lot of the things that are important for them to know can't be taught in the classroom. They have to have the, the chance to get out on the land. And um, I feel that uh, we need people that have real passion to run our Aboriginal language programs where they can be very, very effective tools. Um, I find that that's one area that, that has to be addressed. Oh, yes, yes, for sure. Because in the new um, Aboriginal language, ar language arts curriculum, there's direction in there that uh, every person is to be involved. Every teacher, transient or not, Aboriginal or not, it's a school commitment. I also find too that uh, our local band has language um, dollars, people that work in language, but there's no collaboration. And I can't see why that can't happen. It should be happening. There should be resources like that are shared, that commitment is made from the community to help the schools with children. I don't see that happening right now, and I just kind of think that it's an important component to making sure that they have a responsibility to our community children as well. To tell you the truth, when I first had the opportunity to be hired as a classroom assistant back in 1977, I uh, had no idea what it involved. I, I got hired and then I discovered that I, I loved it so much. I just felt I knew this is what I wanted to do with my life. So, and having personally experienced a lot of things like with, uh, involved with residential school, I felt um, at, in the beginning, I was, it was a very different story for me about, um, I felt very, uh, maybe a lot of residential school people, I felt very inferior to um, the white staff. And I wasn't very outspoken. 
I um, had all the traits of uh, of a child, of a person that had experienced trauma. And um, I learned through some working with some really excellent teachers about, uh, they saw in me um, somebody that had the potential to be a classroom teacher, to do this work. And I really have to thank them because if, it, if I didn't have that kind of guidance, I don't think I would have found my voice or my beliefs or the strength to um, bring it forward through teaching two children. I don't run around and do an awful lot of explanations to the community members. I stay focused on children. I really, really keep my focus on children and what I could bring into it um, in a way to satisfy some of the, the things that I've gone through and felt very um, incapable of changing. Uh, and I feel that uh, it's just been my passion in life and continues to be every day. I think so because I come from a time where I couldn't voice an opinion. And coming from that to today where I feel like a valued member of a staff, of a community, of a region, of my territory, I feel that I can contribute. I've, um, I've tried to to keep my mind open all the time and to, to answer the hard questions within myself and to really trust on um, my colleagues. And I do feel a lot of um, respect and a lot of um, times I'm put in a position where I'm trusted to give guidance and I, I feel that I do contribute. Mm -hmm. I think that um, it scares me the lack of work that's been done in genealogy. And if we're talking about children knowing where they come from, uh, I've seen really good work done in Toledo with genealogy. It scares me that we have so limited work done I especially worry when they get to the high school and, and they still don't know like where they come from. I would love to see a big project done and involve the high school students and to display the information in the school and so that every child knows their relationships. You can't build relationships without knowing. Uh, in, you know, and the importance of recognition and the importance of understanding your ancestors and the areas they lived in and their, the strengths they had is like really invaluable. And uh, that's one, one area. Um, I also really, really, really wish for um, really powerful, strong um, opportunities available for towards language retainment. I see some work that's being done in BC. We don't have anything like that happening in the NWT where it's like, okay, well, you understand, but you can't speak it. Um, it would be like for people like me that I really understand, but I can speak basic, but I'm, I can't like tell stories and I'm not confident. It's working with what you have and, and helping you to, to get through the blocks. So I really wish for that kind of opportunities. The elders are, we've had contributions made to the document. 
that was spearheaded by Phoebe Taddy, and it's been mandated to be taught in the schools. And we have an awful lot of transient teachers that are really uncertain of how to deliver these, like, it's almost like um, you need to give them permission to, or to assist them, because it's, like in theory, it sounds really, really good, really nice, but you you cannot teach a spirit, spirituality component of a people. It has to, it has, you know, and it could be, they could do the teaching aspects of setting it up, planning it, but they need involvement from the elders or a committee dedicated to helping teachers in the classroom. I, um, I think that to take the document at the, a community level and to research, okay, what, how, and in what way should this be addressed? And um, because to be truthful, they have, it's impossible for them to, to do certain things. In 10 years, I have to be optimistic because I've been around for so long and I have seen a lot of changes. Although if I were to, I give the frustration level I feel sometimes about um, our Aboriginal language instruction could be a lot better. I have to be optimistic that uh, we are going to find really dedicated people to jump on board and to um, to help to make um, things more possible um, I have to be optimistic looking back in hindsight and seeing how far we actually have come from when I first started so in 10 years I I'm hoping that um, we only get stronger in the programs we are delivering and attempting to to deliver. I I like what I see, and um, I like that uh, we can work with people that have strengths, even though they're not Aboriginal. They have strengths to help planning and to implement the programs.